Welcome to another Seismic Astro Week in April 2024. Yes, we had the eclipse on April 8th, Sun, Moon, Chiron, exactly conjunct in Aries. That was a big deal. That's going to ripple out for at least six months. Let me know how that went for you below. But uh, we've got a lot to cover today. So on April 19th, the sun enters Taurus. That happens at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So it might be the 21st, depending on your time zone. But this will hopefully dial back some of those drum beats of war that we just keep hearing with the stellium moving through Aries. So when the sun enters Taurus, that may ground some of those energies. It may dial some stuff back. But don't get too comfy because on April 20th, we've got one of the biggest events of this entire year that is Jupiter conjunct Uranus and Taurus. It's already in orb. It's been in orb creeping up as Jupiter moves towards Uranus. That's been happening for the last couple weeks. However, it perfects on April 20th at uh, 9.03 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So again, calculate that for your time zone. But this is one of those events where the date is important. However, it's kind of like a, an exclamation point towards the future. Jupiter and Uranus are both very tied in with the future. Jupiter expands everything that it touches associated with kind of higher learning, higher philosophy, religion, it, just general expansion. Uranus is also a great liberator. Uranus does not like to be tied back. And so when you add Jupiter to the energies of Uranus, you get this kind of like radical revolutionary. You get energy of the breakthrough moving out of any of the old restrictions. If you've got anything from 15 to 25 degrees of the fixed sign, so Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, Leo, you're going to feel that more than most people do. But we're all going to feel this. This is a collective transit. The last time that Jupiter and Uranus conjuncted was actually a triple conjunction. So we had three flybys, and that was at zero degrees of Aries back in June of 2010, September 22nd of 2010, and then January 2nd of 2011. So look back to that time period because some of those same themes may be coming up Aries was, you know, the pioneering sign. And at zero degrees Aries, it was like the very, very beginning of the zodiac. And now with this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, that happens at 21 degrees, 49 minutes of Taurus. As I said, it's already in orb, but that's where it perfects. On April 19th, transiting Mars and Pisces will exactly sextile that point, which means that if you've got anything from 19 to 21 degrees of Libra, then you're getting a yod. You're getting, a, by transit, a finger of God pointing to that like 19 to 23 degrees Libra point. So in addition to the fixed signs, anybody that's got something significant in 19 to 23 Libra, this is going to be a very, very highly charged week for you. On the collective level, though, as I said, it's going to affect everyone. In Taurus, that Taurus-Scorpio axis is the financial axis, and so we could see big changes in the financial realm. We could also see big opportunities coming for future projects. Maybe they don't all happen on April 20th, but definitely keep a notebook on hand. Have something to write down those Uranian insights because they tend to... Whew, strike like lightning. And they're the kind of things that you feel like, wow, that's such an amazing idea. I'll never forget that. And then five minutes later, you're like, what was that? So definitely around April 20th, especially if you've got anything very affected by this Jupiter Uranus conjunction, you're going to want to record those insights, either a voice recorder or a notebook. I also would recommend Exercising a bit of caution, this is an expansive future-oriented conjunction. However, the downside of Jupiter-Uranus could be overconfidence about liberating yourself, overconfidence like burning your bridges and just being like, absolutely enough of this, I don't need you. Maybe you don't, but uh, you might not want to just cut all your ties to everything on April 20th, 21st, because 
That Jupiter energy can lead to overconfidence, especially when conjunct Uranus. So just a heads up about that. On April 21st, we've got some more very intense energy. The sun in Taurus exactly squares Pluto in early Aquarius. That just dials up the intensity, especially anything connected with like power plays, power struggles. Venus will conjunct Chiron that day exactly in Aries. And so that brings up kind of that tension in relationships between what do I need versus what do we need? You know, any kind of healing that might need to occur in connection with relationships or especially in Aries with self-esteem because Venus rules self-esteem, beauty, the arts, uh, but also with Aries energy and especially Chiron in Aries, that's kind of like a wound to the self. And so you're going to want to pay attention to Things that come up, if there's a power play and you're like, oh, I've seen this before. I know what this is. I don't like it. I don't need it. It's holding me back. You're going to have a hard time on April 21st just going with the flow, just kind of a heads up because that Jupiter Uranus conjunction will still be in a very tight orb. And then in addition to that, on that same date, April 21st, asteroid Juno stations direct in Virgo. I don't always cover her, however, with that Venus Chiron conjunction and kind of the deep energies pulled up by the sun in Taurus, which Venus rules, and uh, squaring Pluto in Aquarius, just you might find that topics of relationships are just way more up than usual. It's going to be harder to live in denial, harder to just kind of paint a happy face over dynamics that really aren't working for you, especially if they're actively hurting you. So lots of healing potential if you listen to whatever came through on April 20th and April 21st. So then moving on on April 22nd, of course, we've got Earth Day. Uh, always nice to remember where we live, right? We, we've got Mother Earth and my goodness, does she ever support us? We've got all our internal things going on. All of the, you know, war is not good for the earth. Lots of toxins. And just, you know, it's a time of saying thank you and walking out there, you know, hug a tree, spend some time in nature, ground yourself. That's going to be important because on April 23rd, we've got a very potent full moon in Scorpio. So the intensity is just continuing to build. But a couple cool things as far as the Sabian symbols go. So uh, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, the Sabian symbol for that one is Taurus 22, white dove flying over troubled waters. And then Dane Rudyard goes on with a keynote, the spiritual inspiration that comes to the individual in the overcoming of crisis, a reward to the faithful. So that's that energy on April 20th, but it's still largely in effect at the time of the Scorpio full moon. And that Sabian symbol is Scorpio five degrees, a massive rocky shore resists the pounding of the sea. And then Dane Rudyard adds a keynote, the inertia of all institutionalized procedures. So that sounds more like Taurus energy, right? We think of Scorpio as the sign of death and rebirth, of a radical change. We've got that Jupiter Uranus energy still in effect. Jupiter will have moved to the next degree, but again, still a tight orb at the time of the full moon. But what's going to be interesting is noting which things, which people, which relationships are still there. Which of those are like the rocky shore that doesn't change? No matter how many waves crash against the shore, these things are solid, at least for now. And with the liberating energies, with all this intensity in April, it's worth noting if things that you have just been railing against, like waves pounding a rocky shore that just won't move, you know, water eventually will erode stone, but 
it takes a while. It's not going to happen overnight. And with all of the crazy transits that we have in 2024, and we are far from finished with those, but with all of those transits, especially in April, you know, it's all right if something hasn't completely burst free. The trend, the energies that are moving through the sky are working towards liberation. We've still got that Pluto in Aquarius energy, liberation, getting rid of things that are standing in the way of this like age of Aquarius progress. So we've got that energy. We've got this uh, Venus conjunct Chiron energy helping to heal relationships. We've got that light energy, the sun squaring Pluto, so shining light on tensions, on abuses of power. We've got a lot of opportunities here to move forward in the future, but it's going to be important to pay more attention to what's coming through as like intuitive downloads. Where are the trends heading? What are your dreams indicating? So a few specifics about the uh, full moon in Scorpio. So it happens at 7.48 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Again, calculate that for your own time zone. That's on April 23rd. And there's a couple key conjunctions of note for this. So Elatus, that's a centaur, will be right in that same range between 4 and 5 degrees of Scorpio, right where that full moon occurs. And Elatus, I've mentioned before, but Elatus has this energy of like dodging a bullet or getting out of dodge before things get worse. And so if you have been getting consistent nudgings that something in your life is just not healthy, that you've got to make changes, that's that uh, sun, moon, chiron, exactly conjunct eclipse, uh, the topic of healing is really up. And if you have been consistently having nudges that you need to step aside or you need to remove yourself from a situation, this is an opportunity for you to kind of just move out of the way. You know, there's a lot flying at us, but maybe you want to dodge it. Maybe the stuff isn't going to just evaporate, but you can reposition yourself in such a way that instead of getting a direct hit, which could be really a harsh hit at this point, instead of getting a direct hit, you're getting like more of a, a glancing blow. So that is advisable. Uh, some other good news, if you've been having a lot of Lilith issues, I did that whole uh, video on just the archetype of Lilith and the things that I notice. I'm going to link that below. Just if you haven't checked that out, you might want to because Lilith is kind of up uh, this week as well. So Black Moon Lilith, which is the uh, lunar apogee, the oscillating lunar apogee is the one that I use. That's the true Black Moon Lilith. Uh, she will be at 22 degrees of Virgo at the time of the Scorpio full moon. Mars will be at 24 degrees Pisces at that point. So opposite Lilith. And we've got this kind of mysterious figure that occasionally shows up in my videos and blog posts, and that is Therius. And Therius, it will be at 20 degrees of Virgo at the time of the full moon, conjunct Lilith and also uh, exactly Quincunx Chiron, so that 150 degree aspect with Chiron in Aries. Sirius has this energy of like waiting in the wings. It's uh, sometimes people talk about like how Stalin kind of was just right there to assume power after Lenin passed. Uh, that was, I think, Zane Stein that noted that. But there's a lot of incidents where Sirius is just kind of lurking and then, you know, kind of waiting for the right moment. So you've got that Elatus energy conjunct the full moon in Scorpio, where Elatus is kind of like, ooh, I'm going to move out of the way. And then you got the Therius energy, which is conjunct Lilith. So Lilith is like the wild child, uh, the, uh, the wild woman that needs to break free. She cannot tolerate abuse, especially in Virgo. Lilith can kind of break out of feeling like, really suppressed, including sexually, but also Virgo is a mental sign and, and the sign of the Virgin. So those kinds of issues can come up with regard to Lilith. 
But with Sirius there, there is this sense of kind of like, if not this, then something better. If something in your life has just become intolerable to your inner Lilith, Chiron and Aries, again, quincunxing those two points, the 20 degree Therius, the 22 degree Lilith in Virgo, healing is available and that healing might involve some kind of an upgrade, some kind of a situation where like it's not here yet, but you're like some signs are pointing to it, some structures, some pieces are moving in the background, sort of building something that can calm down Lilith because one of the things that is the hardest for her is if she feels like no one's listening, everybody is gaslighting her and invalidating her thoughts and feelings and her experience of whatever's going on. So we've got these kind of chaotic energies and that Therius Lilith point in Virgo nicely trines the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in another earth sign of Taurus. And so we do have this potential of moving forward, of upgrading things in our earthly realm. But I would just caution people to, you know, read the room, right? There's going to be other opportunities throughout 2024 and 2025 has lots of new energies, lots of planets changing signs. So if you don't catch it all on April 20th, don't worry about it. Just pay attention and take action because that Mars in Pisces will be you know, sex styling, so supportive energy for some of these bursts, for some of these uh, leaps forward. But again, you don't have to take that action. So not to be left out, we've had Mercury retrograde in Aries since April 1st. And on April 25th, two days after the full moon in Scorpio, Mercury finally stations direct. And Mercury stations direct really tightly conjunct the North Node in Aries. It's not an exact, you know, to the minute conjunction, but it's the same degree within minutes. And for me, that's auspicious. That's kind of like, okay, we've done this internal work, this internal sense and evaluation of what do I need in order to move forward. So Mercury retrograde, great for review, great for looking over, you know, where have these issues come up before? Where have things happened? Mercury will have conjuncted Chiron, Mercury will have conjuncted Venus, we're getting a lot of these energies just reminding us of who we are. Aries is the sign of the self. And so when that Mercury retrograde moves all the way back, creeping back right to the collective transiting North Node in Aries, once April 25th happens, we should start to get a sense of, okay, what needs to be done? How can I move forward? But again, this is not the end. This just happens to be one of the bigger astro weeks of 2024. So I look forward to hearing how you're experiencing these energies, including the eclipse, but also are you anticipating anything? Are you expecting to do anything big around the date of April 20th or uh, through the 25th, really? The other thing is that uh, if you want to help this channel expand, uh, so the Jupiter Uranus energy, I would really appreciate uh, sharing the video or subscribing, clicking the like button. Apparently these things really help. If you don't get subscribers, YouTube thinks that, you know, nobody wants to watch your video, even if lots of people are watching it. So if you feel led to help that out, I hate asking, but uh, it is helpful. And I just feel like these are messages of upliftment for humanity. And I would really like to get them out there more. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you and uh, many, many blessings for this week. All right, take care.